say that not even distance can separate two people deeply in love with each other. And that is exactly what Jennifer Smith is exploring in her newest novel, The Geography of You and Me. And we are so fortunate to have her with us this morning. Jennifer. Thank you for having me. Welcome so and thank you here. so much. Okay, let's jump right into yes. this one. Um, obviously, it's a book about love and romance and it's a very uh, relatable topic, yes. long distance relationships. Yeah. Tell us more about this book. So I was really interested in exploring. I hadn't read a book um, about a long distance relationship and, and so many of the YA novels and ones that I've written myself are about sort of that instant spark of connection. Sure, and yeah. I was curious to see what would happen if you had that at the beginning of a book and then it was very quickly, you know, you were pulled yeah. apart by time or oh, distance. And ow. Yeah, so it was it was it was a question that I asked in the book, you know, how long can you expect a single night to last? And that was sort of what I was interested in. How was it for you to come up with a plot like this, with a storyline like this? Did it involve a lot of processing or internalization in your yeah, end? Yeah, a little bit. I mean it was uh, the the book begins when they get stuck together in an elevator yeah. during a massive blackout in New York City and that was based on a uh, blackout that happened in 2003 and sure, I had just yeah, moved yeah. to Manhattan at the time and it was this very magical night in New York and it was um, people were just out on the streets and and you know it was it was almost like a big party on the streets and so I'd wanted to write about that for a mm -hmm. long time and then once I started playing around with where they would go when they got pulled apart um, it was it was fun to sort of revisit places that I really love you know Lucy the girl goes to Scotland and mm -hmm. uh, which know, is where Europe, you went for grad which school. is where I went for grad school so it was really it was a nice excuse to sort of revisit that and um, and Owen and his family drive out west, or his dad drive out west mm -hmm. and uh, got to visit a few of my favorite cities there too so it was really fun and, and it's you know you read this book and you can't really decide if you're more drawn into the love story or the the pictures of the scenery to so the places that yeah. you so skillfully with thank ease you. paint with just words thank you it's it's like I said, it's really fun I, mean, I love traveling and I love all these places yeah so how much of this book was from personal experience. I mean, we know about the blackout, yeah, but in terms yeah. of love, have you? Know, you it's funny. I'm Jennifer, not be really honest. <laughs> I was I was in a very brief long distance relationship, okay. and I, you know, it's hard. It's really hard, and I, I definitely drew from that. I've had friends who have managed it uh, from longer distances and better. Yeah. Oh and gosh. So I I do think you know I wanted to to portray a realistic but hopeful. I mean, they both end up meeting other people at some mm -hmm. point because they. I think it is realistic that. You know there are some bumps life along happens, the way, yes, exactly. But I wanted to, I wanted it to be a hopeful portrait of, of this sort of situation. What is your process in terms of writing? How do you get into it? How do you start? Yeah. A, yeah, I am a very disorganized writer. I always get jealous I could of these not authors. Tell. Who, thank you. Who, who outline very, you know, in a very regimented way. Mm -hmm. I, um, I just, I sort of just start and see where it goes. There's a great quote that I'm gonna butcher slightly, but it's by an uh, author, E.L. Doctorow, and he says, "Writing is like driving a car at night." you know, you can only see as far as your headlights, but somehow that's enough to get you all the way home. Oh, that's nice. And for me, I can see home, I can sort of see where I want the characters to end mm -hmm. up, but I don't see much further than the headlights. There's a lot of dark space in between, but it's it's fun because that's when you leave room for surprises. Did you always want to be a, a novelist or always, a writer? Always, always. Since I was 10 years old, I won wow. a short story contest for, of course, a story about a girl and a horse in, okay. uh, when I was 10, and I think I caught the bug after that. Oh, boy. And I just always, you know, I, I always, wanted to be a, a writer. Mm -hmm. I kind of never dreamed of uh, actually being an author. I, it was something I knew I was going to do no matter what happened sure. publishing-wise, but I kind of, when you're a kid, you think saying you want to be an author is like saying you want to be an astronaut or a ballerina. Yeah, something it's one of those general it's, ambitions you know, in yes, life. It's, yeah. it's possible, but it's maybe not the most realistic career mm -hmm. passion, But so I feel very lucky to be doing it now. You. But if you weren't a writer, what would you be doing? Well, I'm actually an editor as well, so it's I balance these two jobs. Is that how you save money? You edit your own <laughs> Oh my gosh, I wish. I'm always embarrassed when I hand my manuscript to my editor because they, they come back with all these comments and oh I think boy. they probably think I'm a terrible editor. But it's so different when it's your it's own. It's a different you, hat. Yeah, yeah you you're can't wearing. see the forest mm -hmm. for the trees when it's your own. But I love being an editor too. It's so much fun to discover mm -hmm. great new voices to bring books out into the world. I want to talk briefly about yes, the other books that you have. Yes. I love the statistical probability of love at yes, first sight. Now, this is an title. issue people love talking about. Yes. Tell us about that one. So that's about two teens who meet on a flight from New York to London and yeah. she's on her way to her, her father's wedding and um, she meets a boy named Oliver on the plane and they get separated once they get to customs in, in London. And I, you know, with that one, it was the, I mean, all my books sort of touch on themes of fate mm. and serendipity. Sure. And that one You're really, a hopeless romantic I, deep inside. I'm I knew it. down to my very toes. <laughs> I'm an optimist at heart. Um, and so that one was really, the question, you know, who would have guessed that four minutes could change anything? She misses her flight by four minutes and she ends up meeting this boy yeah. and it, it kind of changes everything. So what would be your you. advice to aspiring writers out there? You know, the biggest thing is just to read a lot. It's honestly, it sounds, it sounds 
you know, very basic, but it's yeah. the more you read, the more you get a, a sense for the rhythm of a book and the mm -hmm. pacing, and um, and it's just so important to find out, to figure out what makes a great story. And then the other big thing is just to not be afraid to fail. I think a nah. lot of, like, beginning writers get really hung up on trying to make something perfect, mm -hmm. and then they can't get past, you know, the first few pages because they're not happy with them, and you sure. just... The first draft is supposed to be a mess. Well, how do they follow you? Are you on social media yes, at all? Yes, I'm on Twitter, um, at Jen E. Smith. Okay. And uh, I'm on Instagram, at Jennifer E. Smith. And, you Perfect. know, I have a website, jenniferesmith.com. Well, it's been so exciting having you, you here. You. Thank you for sharing, you know, your world yes. and, and your travels with us through the books that you write. And Thank we are you. waiting for more stories to I, come from I appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you. Well, there you have it. That's Jennifer Smith, author of The Geography of You and Me.